most uh, important thing to know about uh, febrile neutropenia and the risk from cancer, chemotherapy, and targeted therapies combined is that that risk is highest in the very first cycle of treatment. So a number of our other toxicities of treatment are cumulative and become more of a problem in later cycles of treatment. This is generally a first cycle event because we don't know the precise risk to the patient until they actually experience the chemotherapy. We have some general guidelines on what the risk of febrile neutropenia is with different regimens, but in fact, the personal risk, the individual factors in terms of age, functional status, prior treatment, uh, liver function, renal function, uh, a variety of factors go into the individual's uh, handling pharmacodynamically of the chemotherapy that then results in neutropenia. Uh, the complication, if it's not managed, leads to uh, hospitalization, IV antibiotics, and as I showed uh, in our talk today, there's still a significant mortality from this uh, uh, complication. It remains the highest risk of any uh, of our cancer treatments is the risk of dying from febrile neutropenia. So I think what's important to our, uh, uh, to our providers and those taking care of patients is you really have to think about this before you start the chemotherapy. If you're treating patients with curative intent, full dose chemotherapy, um, and other settings where the risk of febrile neutropenia is going to be substantial, then you have to consider uh, first cycle use of a growth factor to reduce that complication. The bar has been set at a risk of 20 percent. ASCO has said if the risk is less than 20 percent, do not use these growth factors. Wait and see what happens. But I think it's important to make sure if you are 20 percent or above, uh, the guidelines of NCCN, ASCO, and others all recommend preemptive first cycle use. Why?